Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to some of you and peace out to the rest of you. Black Heart Assign and Black In, and let me start by thanking the new subscribers from this past week, from uh, Monday up until today. And uh, I want to tell you what I've told the previous subscribers before. They've heard me say this multiple times. Please prioritize the share button, then like, because the share button is important for the reason that it, uh, we need as many people to benefit as possible. And that's because the message is more important than the messenger. When you hit the like, that helps me personally, but when you hit the share button, that helps others. So please hit it. Share with people you know. This message and, pre and, and uh, the ones that are coming in the future, Lord willing. Shouts out to you all. Um, the other thing is that uh, I wanted to uh, point out, too, that in the poem that I recorded yesterday to rip up those three co-eds poem, none of this was, uh, nothing I said was for the purpose of blaming anybody who wants to be safe. There are dangerous men and women out there. The reason that I ripped it up is because uh, they did not give any particular facts that's, uh, that would show how rare it is for women to be victimized by violence for rejecting a man. And they did not even point out how common it is for men to go through lifetimes of confusion and how much more likely any man is to wind up in uh, a court, be it civil or criminal, for not being able to read women's minds. Then that, and how much more of a danger that is. Um, many women would say, well, yeah, but men don't really have to worry about being raped unless they go to prison or jail. And to a certain extent, that's true, but it's not necessarily because women are so altruistic. It's only because women have a contempt for penis until, of course, every other woman wants that same penis. Like I said, <laughs> no woman wants a dick until there's competition. That's what I said yesterday. So it's not some altruism uh, that stops men from having to worry about being raped by women in many cases. It's not that. It's just conceit, that's all. Women figure that, uh, I mean, if women enjoyed sex well women enjoy sex more than men but if people were aware of that from a young age then yeah there'd be women going around trying to find a way to rape a man believe that i know from experience that they would try to do it if they could get away with it and they saw it as something they would enjoy that he wouldn't anyway now that i've clarified that um this message is going to be about uh the type of women that slept with jason roger pope he's not facing one rape charge a forcible rape. He is facing some statutory rape charges, I guess, because of the ones who were underage, but not all of them were. I'm assuming he's facing some of those, but he's not facing a forcible rape charge that I've seen yet. These women laid down with him, and I want to point this out. These women were the kind of women that most of us brothers would never give a second thought to, would not approach. Those, most of you hearing the sound of my voice would not go after these kinds of broads. You know they're ratchet from the pictures because you can tell by the poses that it, the way they're looking at the camera, they know what's there, the camera is not hidden, and where he has his hands and how proud they are to be photographing themselves with him in those particular poses. When I was coming up and where I grew up, women would not have taken photographs with me like that. Um, and I'm a black man. They would not have done it because of the appearance of an interracial coupling. But, and this is before the internet really took off like that. Even before the internet, they would not have done it. Now, the way things are at this point, um, you got sisters that are, you would think are the furthest thing from a white boy. They're not in white neighborhoods growing up, obviously. And yet they're taking photographs, lewd, lascivious, lecherous photographs with a white boy that does not have any visible trace of black blood in him or any record of such. He's just a white bread caucasoid that put his cap on backwards a few times and say yo, 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 and promoted some parties. But he wasn't getting with the sisters that were coming out of neighborhoods like Sugar Hill um, or, um, you know, some of these high income zip codes like Prince George's County, for instance. These weren't the sisters he was with. It still matters that he was able to go through 693 plus for this reason alone. 
no matter how ratchet or low down these women were that he was with, the fact remains that their influence does not stop at them. Because understand this, many of these women that now got that gangster virus from him did not always act the way that they do now. A lot of them were kids and you didn't know they were going to turn out this way. A lot of them were good kids at some point. And somehow in middle school and high school, they got corrupted because the good influence does not sway the bad kids, but the bad influence does sway good kids, especially in our neighborhoods. Because we think we're supposed to be low life niggas anyway. It happens in Mexican neighborhoods, too. I'm not saying Latino neighborhoods. I'm talking specifically Mexican. That nigger culture is heavy with them, too. It, go, it bees like that. So you take good kids at a young age and seventh grade by the second quarter of the seventh grade, most of the good ones have been corrupted. By eighth grade, they are fully programmed to laugh at those who don't do ignorant, ratchet, ignis crap. That's what's going on. So if you got innocent daughters and innocent nieces, tell them this story. Now, you don't have to tell them about sex. You don't have to describe to them HIV, but you can say that they did bad things that were unhealthy with the same guy because they thought it was funny because they thought being bad was funny. And that a lot of the good girls became like these women. And when they got older, they were, they were just like these same women. And so all of them got sick. And the medicine is so expensive that most of them are going to die because they can't afford the medicine. Tell them that story. And when they say, well, why did the good ones turn bad? You say, well, because the good ones wanted to be friends with the bad ones. And so when the bad ones made fun of the good ones, the good ones thought they had to act bad to be friends with the bad ones. They didn't want to just be friends with each other. And you, when you get older, you have to realize how important it is that you stay good. You have to understand that importance. That's it. That's what's going on. And this is what you got to you got to say to your nieces and your daughters. Whether your brother agrees with what you tell your niece or your sister agrees or whether your brother or your sister disagrees with what you tell your niece, you got to go ahead and tell them this anyway. Because at this point, what we're dealing with is, is, is a cycle wherein most of our kids even the ones that come up good go through this bad phase in middle and high school and you think they're just going to grow out of it. But by the time they grow out of it, they're in their late 20s and the damage is done. And when they raise their own kids, they can't get their kids to bypass that nigga stage. It's a cycle. It doesn't have to be that way, but it is. What is the reason? Because somewhere down the line, we have not sat down and said our culture is jacked up and needs to be changed. So. That's why it is. See, remember that these 92 octanes still got 85 octane friends, especially at these young ages. And they're going to listen to them. Now, the 85 octane ain't going to listen to nothing the 92 octane got to say. But the 92 octane, you would be surprised how easily she can be guilt tripped into behaving like the 85 octane. Girl, you need to get turned up. You'll be, you be shocked at how easily they believe this ignorant stuff. I know, right? And once some of that influence creeps in, some of it lasts forever. This is why my previous subscribers have heard that story about one of the uh, uh, one of the girls that was a daughter of my mother's friend. And she became um, uh, employed by the federal prosecutor's office in her city. But her husband was a nigger. She didn't just date an ignorant ass nigger. She married him. And he was up there feeding inside information to his boys because she was bringing casework home with her. She didn't know what he was doing, but he'd go through her files when she wasn't looking, find out what was going on and feed the inside info to his boys. So then they realized they couldn't catch certain people that the, that the locals knew were doing certain things, but they couldn't catch them. So they had to ask her about it. Found out what it was going on. Now, to her credit, she did divorce this ignorant nigga. But why was she with him in the first place when he was just a street nigga with nothing to offer near what she had to offer? Because that was sexy. That's why. That's what the reason was. 
she was negatively influenced by these same types of women that were ready to sleep with Jason Roger Pope. That's what that was. To a certain extent, the only question is how much. And fortunately, she was not negatively influenced to go chasing after the same dangling that everybody else was. Fortunately, she didn't catch a disease from this dude. That's the real truth of the matter. But you understand now where I'm going with this. We got to sit our daughters and our nieces down and tell them when they're good, you're good. You need to stay good. And I'm going to tell you the story that shows you why you need to stay good and not become bad like a lot of uh, the other girls are going to wind up doing. This is what will wind up happening. And show them pictures of advanced age, uh, advanced AIDS patients. Where the virus is wreaking havoc on them in the final stages of life before they die. Show them them photographs and say this is what happens to people when they catch that virus and they get that sick. This is what they look like shortly before the virus kills them. Let them know this. Because we got to scare the hell out of the ones for whom there is some hope left. I think I've gone on long enough about this. Thank you for being patient. Blackheart, sign of blackout. Asalaamu Alaikum.